Hey guys, it's Jordan with the Young Turks, TYT Politics. I am coming to you from a parked car. I know some of you think I'm a maniac and do Facebook videos while I'm driving. This is not the case. But I'm coming to you from a parked car. I am in Fort Yates, North Dakota, uh, where I just interviewed Bobby Kennedy Jr. of the Kennedy fame. So uh, I don't really get celebrity shock that much, but I mean, he is a Kennedy. So it was it was nice. Uh, he's down here. He's an environmental attorney and obviously a Kennedy. And uh, he's down here showing his support for the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. Uh, I interviewed him. Uh, this morning, I interviewed a whistleblower uh, who used to work for Enbridge. Enbridge is uh, another energy transfer partners kind of oil company uh, that has been responsible for spills all over the United States. Uh, and this guy, John uh, Bolt, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I think it's Bollinger, like bowling ball, but Bollinger. Uh, John Bollinger, he's been a whistleblower. He's gone around the country uh, exposing that after these spills, once the oil companies say, oh, yeah, we've cleaned it up, they're not cleaned up. And thousands and thousands and thousands of people have been have gotten sick as a result of oil spills or have died. So I interviewed him this morning. Uh, we've done a lot of interviews that are not up on the channel. If you go on youtube.com slash TYT politics, you will see a bunch of new videos up this morning. First and foremost, I interview, uh, we put up an interview with a young female water protector. I believe she's 18. Uh, once police arrested her on bogus charges, uh, like most of the people here arrested on ridiculous bogus charges, uh, they, broke, they broke the girl's arm. They were so tough with her, they broke her arm. So that's up. Uh, as well, there's a short video up, I think it's under two minutes long, uh, showing, uh, I, w I wasn't even in the video, I just was at the top, but I allowed uh, water protectors, Native Americans, non-Native Americans to give a direct message to President Obama uh, why they should shut the Dakota Access Pipeline uh, down. It's a, I think it's like under two minute video, kind of uh, a little bit different than how I normally do things, but I wanted the video to be short, sweet. Uh, try to get it to go viral. So that's up on youtube.com slash TYT politics. Uh, it's also up on our Facebook page. So go like it, go share it, trying to get it uh, shared far and wide. I think it's up um, up to 10,000 views on Facebook or something. Uh, and we just posted before we came here, it's always kind of a race, race against time. Do we show up late to interviews in order to get videos up? Because uploading videos takes some time. Uh, but we just posted... Uh, a scene from yesterday. I actually wasn't there, but a great, uh, great reporter and producer here, Jonathan Klett, he gave me the footage. Uh, it was Native Americans, water protectors at a construction site, and you saw a dapple security holding baseball bats, threatening them with violence, uh, where they called the water protectors scum of the earth, and they said, go, f go live on, go, go find new land to live on. I'm paraphrasing. I don't have the exact quote, but they did call them scum of the earth. And they said, we don't care. You don't get it. We don't care about you people. Uh, you know, find, find somewhere else to live. So you see in that video, the, the, the sheer, um, content that, uh, the Dakota access pipeline operators, their security mercenaries, uh, people in, in around town, uh, have towards native Americans whose land is being dug up and destroyed. Uh, they're the scum of the earth, according to Dapple Security. Uh, Native Americans are scum of the earth. Environmentalists that have come in from all over the world are, are scum of the earth, uh, instead of looking in the mirror. So they're, they are basically threatening water protectors who are uh, standing together in a, uh, holding hands in a, uh, in a straight line, uh, threatening them with baseball bats and telling them they're scum. So that is up. That's another short video. And we'll have other videos up as we go. Uh, but there's a lot of updates uh, as far as the Dakota Access Pipeline that I wanted to get to you. It's been coming in hot and heavy, so I might not have all of them. Uh, but uh, I'm going to tell you the most important ones. So uh, yesterday afternoon slash early evening, uh, President Obama and the Army Corps of Engineers issued a statement that they will not, uh, that they need more time to look into uh, the impact of the Dakota Access Pipeline, so they will not grant uh, permits, the final permits that would be needed for energy transfer partners to drill under Lake Oahe. Lake Oahe is the main water source here. That's what everybody is 
uh, fighting for the water protectors, non, uh, you know, Native Americans, non-Natives, people, people from out of state, people from around the world that have flooded uh, the main Osheti camp here in uh, Cannonball, North Dakota. Now, uh, Obama, the Army Corps said they need more time. They, are, they want to spend more time consulting with Standing Rock Sioux Tribe to look at the impact of uh, the potential pipeline to go through. Well, what have you been doing since September? What do you need more time for? This is not, this is not me saying this as someone who openly believes the pipeline should be shut down. I'm just talking to you from a common sense, objective perspective. You've had two months now to look into the cultural impact that this pipeline is going to have, which it's already had an impact because ancient graves where ancestors are buried have been dug up. So we already have seen the impact. Uh, there was not an environmental impact uh, study done, which by law, when you have projects like this, there's supposed to be an environmental impact study. There was not one done, which is against the law. There was an environmental assessment done. And you know who did that assessment? Energy Transfer Partners, the parent company of Dakota Access Pipeline, contracted that out to someone. So basically, the company hired someone to do the assessment. And guess what? They assessed no problem. No problem at all with the pipeline. So what is it that you need more time? You're saying you need more time. You're going to talk to this uh, Standing Rock Sioux tribe. Why haven't you been talking to them in the first place? We, we all know that the Standing Rock Sioux tribe, part of their case uh, in court was they were never consulted about this company putting a pipeline, uh, uh, you know, through its land and under its water. They were never consulted. So I don't really know what President Obama, what the Department of Justice, what the Army Corps of Engineers, what exactly they need more time on is beyond me, because you know what the cultural impact is. And if you want an environmental impact study, if you want to do an environmental impact study, that's fine. You should have done it in the first place. But benefit of the doubt here. Okay, well, if you want an environmental impact study done, you know what you need to do in that case? You got to shut the pipeline construction down completely, meaning construction workers, uh, Dakota Access Pipeline, the construction machine need to be off the property until we have an environmental impact study done. And you need people here to enforce it. Because like I've said in other videos, there's no time for, uh, this is not a case where you could say the honor system. We're telling you you can't drill under and you're going to just, the honor system, expect an oil company who only cares about profits to adhere to your, to, to your uh, commands when in reality, what's the worst that's going to happen to them? Have we seen many oil company CEOs go to jail? No. We've seen them get fined millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, which is a drop in the bucket to them when you're talking about the multi-billion dollars they're going to make from this pipeline. So Obama, his administration need more time for the cultural impact and the environmental impact. This is beyond me. And it's dangerous, by the way. It's dangerous because Obama knows full well that if they delay this into the next president, President-elect Trump, which I'm still having a hard time saying, but President-elect Trump, uh, we all know what's going to happen with that, which I'm going to get to shortly. So Obama is basically, if, I mean, who knows, maybe he'll surprise me, surprise you, you know, the, the, the 11th hour of his presidency at the final clock, he'll, he'll deny it. But by doing that, it, it's, it's like, it's like, you know, Jimmy Carter, when he was about to end his presidency, negotiated the deal for the, uh, host, the Iranian hostages to be released. But the Iranian hostages say we won't release them until the minute Reagan is president because they wanted to embarrass Jimmy Carter. So Reagan basically gets the credit for those um, hostages being released. Well, this is the reverse. President Obama, what is he going to do? The, the, the last hour of his presidency, deny this pipeline, say we're not giving you the permits. And then the next day, Trump will approve it. So it's a little, it's a, it's a day late and a dollar short, Obama, if you kick this can down the road to President Trump. And by the way, there is a way to fight Donald Trump on this. Everyone thinks, oh, there's a lot of people now saying to me, what does it matter, Jordan? Even if Obama denies it, Trump, Trump has money in the company. Uh, you know, he's already said he wants to reinvigorate uh, or reopen talks to put the Keystone pipeline through. Well, I'll get to Trump in a minute, but the bottom line is, uh, it is, it is an excuse. It is a pretty, um, 
not credible excuse to say that you need more time. You've had not even the two months since Obama originally halted construction, which was also a misnomer because he only volunteer, asked voluntarily for the company to stop all construction. He didn't, he didn't uh, uh, command them that they have to stop construction. The only area that was actually command that they could not work was right around or under Lake Oahe. The rest of the way, they've been constructing and they're done. They are done with construction now. Now it's just a matter of the, uh, the drills, the, uh, the, the drill coming from out of state, uh, which from sources I've talked to, it's coming from Nevada uh, here to North Dakota and then waiting to drill. But oil companies who are losing millions of dollars, according to them, a day by not moving forward, I don't know. I get the feeling that they might just blow off this president who's basically looking the other way, kicking the can down for Donald Trump and say, what's the worst, that could, what's the worst that's going to happen? What is he going to, are you going to fine us? Okay, let him, let him call for a fine. Trump, Trump will, uh, Trump will uh, toss the fines right out. So Obama needs to, at this point, it's not just about whether what Obama does or does not do, whether it will have impact. It's also about do the right thing, right? You ran on hope and change. You know, you ran. You want to be called the climate change president. Uh, you boast about the pa- Paris Climate Accords, how it's been the most visionary climate uh, agreement in, in history. I think it's a Band-Aid personally, but that's just my opinion. It's, it's a step in the right direction. But as Josh Fox says, it's nowhere near, nowhere near what needs to be done. But the point is, don't give me you need more time don't give me, I want, you know, we need more time to talk to the, the Standing Rock Sioux tribe. You know, Obama knows the Department of Justice, the Army Corps, they know the issues. And if they don't know the issues, that is gross negligence and gross dereliction of duty. You should, from what I'm told, they have had people here to observe uh, the cultural impact and the digging up of land. And they know, I mean... They're not, they're not blind. They've seen the oil spills all around the country, including North Dakota, which many of them are not uh, reported. The, oh, the company says, we don't want to over-report small little nothing spills. Yeah, how many of those small little nothing spills are there that aren't reported? So basically, you have Obama kicking the can down the road. So that happened yesterday. Now, today, uh, Energy Transfer Partners has filed for relief in federal court. Energy Transfer Partners being the parent company they filed for release with a federal judge, uh, basically asking the judge to force the Army Corps of Engineers to make a decision. Um, I don't have the direct quote in me. I don't have the direct quote in front of me. Uh, it's, it's from I, I saw it on ABCNews.com, and they were basically uh, crying a river about that they, this is costing them. This delay is costing them millions and millions of dollars a day. Well, cry me a fucking Missouri River, okay? Nobody cares about how much money you are being costed per day. Because that's the rub. That is what this is about. This is not about energy independence, folks. This is not about, uh, you know, creating new uh, ways of, you know, domestic energy so we don't have to be reliant on foreign energy. I've already done plenty of reports that show this is going, this is basically used for foreign exports. Okay. So what this is about is the handful of billionaires that are going to become more rich than they already are, they want their pipeline through and they want their money. That's what this is about. And they're basically telling their little puppets in the federal government, get the fuck out of my way. You, you know, I'm, I'm on my way to the bank and I can't cast a check because you're blocking me. That's what this is about. Because this is not going to help uh, with domestic energy. This is not going to help uh, you know, get us off uh, foreign energy. I mean, The Intercept has done great reporting on this. There's a lot of places that show this company has no proof that this is going to be used for foreign, just for domestic use. A spokesperson once said, they're like the FedEx. They're just getting it to the energy distributors. And you know what those energy distributors do? They export it because that's what makes them the most money. So that's right, Jeanette. It's the money, Lebowski. So Energy transfer partners in, in, so you have President Obama being a coward and delaying, delaying this. Uh, we need more time. In the next, the next day, less than 24 hours, energy transfer partners kicking and screaming, files in court, trying to force the Army Corps of Engineers, which, by the way, 
is the federal government and is Obama. You know, in benefit of the doubt of the army engineers who I've interviewed, they're not making the decision. This is Barack Obama making the decision. They're just a spokes, spokesman on it. So it's Obama. So the oil companies basically say, you're costing us millions, you're costing us millions. And they are um, filing a federal suit. So what you have here is total carelessness, total, total real, I would say, I mean, it's immoral. This oil company could care less about the ramifications on the land, on the people. They just want this pipeline through and they want their money. And as, as you'll see in future videos, I interviewed this whistleblower this morning, when the oil spills, they don't care about that either. They're just on their way. And the person I interviewed this morning shows the oil company literally works to cover it up. They pay people to plant grass and plant other things over oil so that it looks like, well, no, the spill is cleaned. So this is all, it, it's part immoral, part cover-up, part the revolving door between the lobbyists, the oil companies, the banks. It's all one web of immorality and corruption. And it's dangerous what President Obama is doing, because you know what? It's not good enough if he denies it the, day, the last day of his presidency. Yeah, it'll give a moral victory and people will rejoice for a minute, but you, he's gotta, he has got, if he wants to do the right thing, he's got to do it now. Because then the protectors, the environmental activists can organize and mobilize with the thought in mind, all right, we know, we know what Trump's going to try to do. We're going to put the, we're going to put the heat on him before he even gets into office because Donald Trump is a whole nother beast than, than President Obama. So that's the Obama part. Obama delayed it. Now the federal, now the parent company of the pipeline is uh, suing in court to try to get the federal judge to speed up the army Corps. Now, I've reported before that Donald Trump uh, has, has invested in energy transfer partners. So it's not just a pipeline. There's other, there's other places reporting on the... I mean, Donald Trump is a walking conflict of interest, run, walking into the White House. He says that a lot of, uh, a lot of his funds and deals are going to be put into a blind trust. Yeah. You know who's going to be in charge of his blind trust? His children. So to, to think that Donald Trump's going to detach himself from his business dealings, uh, his investments. Yeah, that's as believable as me being a male model. Okay, not going to happen. So not only does Donald Trump have money in this uh, parent company of this pipeline, but the parent company of the pipeline also donated to co Trump's campaign. Let me read you from NBCNews.com. The incoming Donald Trump administration will ensure the completion of the controversial Dakota Access Pipeline in North Dakota, the pipeline company's CEO told NBC News in an interview Friday. Quote, I'm 100% sure that the pipeline will be approved by a Trump administration. CEO Kelsey Warren of Energy Transfer Partners, the Dallas-based company funding the $3.7 billion project, told NBC News. I believe we will have a government in place that believes in energy infrastructure. Warren said he had not spoken to the president-elect to understand his position on the pipeline. Yeah, bullshit. Uh, which has galvanized opposition globally for months. And Warren denied any prior contact with the Trump campaign. Also bullshit. Moving forward. In June, Warren donated $100,000 to the Trump Victory Fund, a joint fundraising committee for Trump's campaign, and a further $3,000 direct, $3, directly to the Trump campaign. For his part... Trump's campaign financial disclosure forms revealed the president-elect's investment totaling between $500,000 and $1 million in energy transfer partners, suggesting a, poss a possible vested financial interest in the completion of the pipeline. Throughout his campaign, Trump railed against what he called special interests in Washington. His message was clear. Industry lobbyists and corporate executives yield an outsized influence on shaping policy in Washington, and he was going to drain the swamp on this quid pro quo corruption. Warren, the CEO of Energy Transfer uh, Partners, whose net worth Forbes estimates to be $3.9 billion, said he did not categorize his donations as, as akin to special interests. Quote, I don't, even, I don't even know how much I gave to the Trump campaign. I give to Republicans and Democrats. So, let me start off with one thing. This is a CEO who is worth $3.9 billion. $3.9 billion. And he's complaining 
about how much money the company is losing uh, per day as, as this pipeline is delayed, go to hell. And maybe that's not the journalistic thing to say, but give me a break. This is what's wrong with this country. When is it enough money? When is it enough money? Okay, you're worth $3.9 billion. Will you stop at $6 billion? Will you be satisfied? Or is it, it's just not about money. It's just about how many people can we fuck and how much, how much uh, can we hoard for ourselves. So that's number one. That's ridiculous. But number two, let me tell you something. Uh, Trump gave 500000 to a million dollars, I guess, to energy transfer partners. That's, that's, that's milk money to Donald Trump. So the bottom line is, this isn't really about, is Trump more focused on the fact that he's going to make money from this pipeline or more focused on the absolute nightmare of a headache he's going to get if he tries to approve this pipeline. So it's one thing if Trump uh, had prior investments to this company, right? It's another thing if the company has donated to Trump. So in the grand scheme of the millions of dollars donated by Democrats and Republicans in this insane system we have, is the company donating $100,000 like the, you know, the, the be all end all it's a hundred thousand dollars. A lot of money to me. Uh, let's say a hundred, three thousand dollars. Cause they donated a hundred thousand to the Trump victory fund and 3000, uh, the CEO directly sent to Trump. So, but that's, that's a good chunk of change, but it's the appearance. You're going to tell me that president elect Trump at the time when he is president, he's Mr. I'm going to drain the swamp of the corrupt, uh, you know, the corrupt, uh, what did, what did he call it? The, uh, he called her crooked, and I think the Washington cartel. Oh, no, that was Ted Cruz. Excuse me. Donald Trump's been railing against the revolving door, the corrupt lobbyists, who, by the way, he was on 60 Minutes on Sunday, and he was asked directly, uh, you know, you have lobbyists on your transition team. How could you say you're going to drain the swamp? And, you know, Trump said, well, you got to phase it out. You know, they're the ones that are there now. They're all lobbyists. So he just dodged. He's, I, I told you from the start, Trump is a con man. He's, he, he fed people what they wanted to hear. His, his supporters are going to be very disappointed when he realizes an actual insider manipulated them to actually thinking he's an outsider. But that's another video. So if Obama did the right thing now, then Trump has to start asking, answering now, how is it not a gross conflict of interest for you to be approving a pipeline that you have investments in and they have invested in you? Do you really think Donald Trump um, among all the protests he's going to have, protests on trying to repeal Obamacare, protests on building the wall, the great big wall with the beautiful open door, uh, protests around the country we've already seen uh, just for being Donald Trump. You think he, to make a couple dollars, from, for him, it's a couple dollars. You think he is really going to, to, to want that kind of heat? Because by the way, Take with the protests, I should have said this, there's, there's protests and actions going on uh, all over the country today in support of the water protectors. Uh, you could go, uh, I don't know the website, but just Google it. Uh, there's one in D.C., there's one in L.A., TYT Politics, by the way, when I'm done with this. Taylor in Los Angeles will be uh, streaming on TYT Politics Facebook, one of the demonstrations in L.A. So the protests today are going to look like nothing compared to Donald Trump trying to approve a pipeline that he's personally making money from. And don't get me wrong, I'm not naive. He might say fuck it anyway and approve it. Because, you know, the, what, the Donald Trump you get depends on how, how many hours he sleeps and how many tweets he sent, right? You might get a Donald Trump who, uh, you know, can't stand when people are upset at him, loves to be loved by everybody, doesn't want to be exposed as the true con man that he is right out of the gate. And he might say, you know, I, this is a conflict of interest. I, I'm going to honor uh, President Obama's decision. That is a possibility, particularly if there's enough heat on him. And you know how to get mass media coverage, unfortunately, in this country? Uh, if you have Susan Sarandon, if you have Mark Ruffalo, if you have Bernie Sanders, if you have celebrities and leading politicians at the White House lawn with those megaphones saying, you're corrupt, Mr. Trump, you're an oil man. I would like to see Donald Trump approve the pipeline that he has money in. So the point is, President Obama has the opportunity right now to leave that shit sandwich on Donald Trump's doorstep. He doesn't have to kick it down the road to Trump. He could make the right decision now 
and, and make Donald Trump reverse his decision and answer to not just thousands, millions of people why he's approving a pipeline that he has direct investments in and that the company invested in his candidacy. That's not a very palpable position for Mr. Drain the Swamp of Washington corruption to take. I'm not saying it means he's not going to take it, but you have a lot better fight on your hands and a lot better case to make if the pipeline was already, uh, if the final permits were already denied by the outgoing president and make the new, make the new president show that he's corrupt. So that is, that's where I stand on it. Um, I think that Donald Trump also, it's not just the standing rock. There's going to be other reporting out when I'm, when I'm home and have more time, I'll, I'll tell you about other conflict of interest. But he's going to have conflict of interest headaches pretty much every day of his presidency. Because, frankly, if we're, if we're talking about the Clinton Foundation should have been shut down, which I think it should have, if she became president, well, Trump's real estate company, I don't want to say shut it down, but there, it, it needs to seize uh, operations while he is president of the United States. Or a neutral person that has nothing to do with Trump needs to take over operations with no communication to Trump. That would be probably as bullshit as super PACs don't coordinate with campaigns. But having his kids running his company, who, by the way, he's asking for top top security clearance for his kids because they're going to be advisors to him. So there's conflicts of interest all over the place. But the point is, President Obama has the opportunity now to A, do the right thing, but B, leave the shit sandwich on President Trump's doorstep. Because trust me, Trump's first priority is not going to be a pipeline and what and Native Americans bothered. He wants to, you know, repeal Obamacare and get the wall up and all these crazy things. But if you put enough pressure under him, if you make it very obvious that he is a con man, that he is corrupt, that he is putting through a pipeline, not for the benefit of America, but for the benefit of his pocket. Let's see what he does. I like our chances in that case. I really do. Unrelated, well, related, uh, there's, still mass, there's still mass fraudulent arrests going on. I wasn't there because it's very difficult to cover every demonstration that's going on here. Uh, today, there was a, a police blockade put in place, and uh, there was water protectors trying to, um, again, pray uh, or, or get to a construction site. And they were stopped by uh, militarized police. Many arrests, uh, it got, people were pulled out of their cars. I shared, uh, I shared it on my Facebook stream from Red, Red Warrior Camp's uh, Facebook stream. Uh, very aggressive police force. So this, this militarized police that's breaking the law, uh, assaulting people and violating human rights has not stopped. So meanwhile, while President Obama, you know, lets it play out, as he said weeks ago, kicks the can down the road for Trump, he's allowing the wild, wild west out here to continue. And you know what? I don't, I really am not saying this to... Uh, stoke fear or provoke fear, but it has to be said, somebody's going to get killed because eventually, you know, I don't want to condemn all police. I know in my life, I I have a friend who's a police officer. I know police officers. They're not all bad people. They're not all uh, wild coyote figures who just want to, you know, beat, 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 beat people up and shoot people. But the people I've seen here by and large are. So how many more How much more abuse are you going to allow to happen? How many more illegal arrests are you going to be allowed to happen? How many more times are you going to allow allow women to be illegally strip searched? How much more are you going to allow uh, police to withhold medicine from people who need their medicine in jail, which I reported on? I just put a video up of an 18-year-old water protector whose arm was broken during an arrest. So Obama's just going to let it play out, right? Well, eventually, they're not going to have rubber bullets. They're going to have real bullets. If if you saw over the weekend, water protectors tried to stop construction at a site and a DAPL, I don't know if it was DAPL security or just somebody associated with the Dakota Access Pipeline Company, drove his truck with protectors on the front, literally running them over with his holding his gun out the window. No, there was... There was no evidence that any of these people had guns. Nobody was pointing guns at him. If you feel threatened, you know, you drive away, but you go the other way. You don't have to drive people over. And he was holding his gun out. And then he fired his gun five times when he got away from people. Uh, 
Eventually, he's going to turn the gun at people. Eventually, those people with baseball bats in the video I just put up are going to start hitting people and bashing hit people's heads in. So, Obama, you could do the right thing. And I know you don't watch all my live streams, President Obama, just some of them. But this is a, this is a moment of courage. This is a test of leadership. It's not just your legacy on the line, it's the country on the line. The country you claim to love.